It looks like an absolutely beautiful day in West Texas. Here we go with the aft fin checks. Those fins are at the base of the rocket. They help to steer the vehicle upon ascent and descent. Them wiggling here is totally normal. We do this final check just a minute before launch. You'll see New Shepard breathing here. In the final minutes, we're handing over to the vehicle for uh, um, you know, the last couple seconds here. We'll see the engine nozzle gimbling, perhaps. This is also a very nominal check. Make sure that we can maneuver the rocket up and down today. We're also keeping an eye on pressures and temperatures in that propellant tank. We need both of those in the green zone today for launch. We're at T minus 30 seconds. Let's hand it off to Mission Control and launch this rocket. Temp off, temp low. Looking to proceed. This is thermal. Believe so. T minus 16, guidance internal. We have a go to proceed. T minus 10. Go to proceed. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, command engine start. Two, one, ignition. New Shepard has cleared the tower and is heading to space. Follow along with us on your screen. We have velocity picking up. We're gaining altitude as New Shepard pierces through the atmosphere. You see that BE-3 engine at 100% power level. New Shepard is approaching max Q here soon, where the aerodynamic stress on that vehicle is at its max. Twenty thousand feet. New Shepard has passed max Q. BE3 is pushing back up to 100% as the atmosphere gets uh, thinner and higher. 40,000 feet. Yeah, right now the astronauts are experiencing increasing Gs. This is uh, going to increase from one to three Gs here. That's three times your weight pushing you down into that seat as you launch to space. Quite a ride. We're nearing two minutes of boost, about two minutes into our mission. So our next big milestone here is main engine cutoff, where that BE3 engine will temporarily terminate. Two minutes negative MDF. Ten seconds to me go. 150,000 feet. There it is, that Miko or main engine cutoff. Our vehicle is now coasting at 2,000 miles per hour. Coming up here soon, we'll have the separation of the crew capsule from the booster. And what do we have there, Alice, on the bottom of our screen? We have our zero G indicator. 250,000 feet. You can see it in the center of your screen. Separation is confirmed. The crew capsule is floating in zero G as the New Shepard booster starts its descent back to the landing pad. An absolutely huge congratulations to all six of our crew. They are officially astronauts.
Wow, I cannot imagine what R6 astronauts are experiencing. They're seeing the curvature of the Earth from space, maybe doing a backflip or two. You know, I'm, I can't confirm that right now, but that maybe is what I would be doing. And as we mentioned, um, you can see the separation between the crew capsule and the, in the, uh, the booster very clearly here in the center of your screen. So you can see this booster altitude is dropping rapidly, right? And the velocity is picking up as that New Shepard booster heads back to the West Texas desert. Yeah, I can imagine the astronauts are unbuckled from their seats right now, looking out those huge windows, enjoying a moment, taking some pictures together. They, uh, the crew usually has something choreographed before the flight, so they know what they're doing up there. And uh, I'm sure it's just a phenomenal moment they're all having together. I feel like Mark and Sharon on board are, you know, the astronaut experts, right? They're, they're professionals here now on their second flight. They're the tour guides. Yes, <laughs> yes. We can really see that booster coming back down now. We're at just around 260,000 feet for that booster. Yeah, and Alice, that booster lands about two miles north of where it took off from on our landing pad. At about five and a half minutes here into the mission, the booster uh, screaming back down to Earth and our astronauts enjoying zero G. So far today, we're seeing a, a perfectly nominal flight. And again, today is our NS-28 mission. It's our ninth human flight. But this booster you're seeing head back to Earth here has flown 12 times. You see that booster altitude is at about 80,000 feet. Um, those wedge fins, the steering fins, the ring fin, those unique design elements that we discussed earlier in the show are working together to guide the booster down to the landing pad. Soon here we'll hear that sonic boom. There go the brakes. Our speed will start pretty rapidly decreasing here. Standing by for that BE3 engine relight. Just a gorgeous view. There's the BE3 engine relight. The landing legs deployed, the West Texas dust in the air. And touchdown. <clears throat> what an incredible sight to see. Let's let this dust clear and we'll see. There, there it, is. it is. The new Shepard booster standing tall on the landing pad. Again, love the sight of that West Texas dust. It clears and it's like almost a magic, it's a magic trick. It's like, <laughs> here's the booster. Yeah, the booster return is truly one of our proudest moments at Blue because it really does show the incredible engineering and all the hard work that's gone into bringing a rocket safely home from space. And that rocket is ready to be reused. Again, you know, we, like you said, Alice, the booster touchdown is, of course, one of the proudest moments. It's, you know, an amazing feat of engineering. But our show and our mission are not over. As we mentioned before, you know, the, the shape of that crew capsule causes it to descend significantly slower, of course, than the booster here. So our astronauts at this point are buckled into their seats. They're headed back down. Um, and we'll check in with them shortly. And there is our capsule under three main parachutes. Now, 
<clears throat> what a beautiful sight to see. Oh my gosh, I love this. Um, now, while those parachutes are essential in providing a gentle touchdown for that crew capsule, it's also uh, outfitted with a retro thrust system. That's going to be at the base of the crew capsule. You'll see that fire here shortly, just moments before touchdown. Yeah, and Alice, when that capsule is just about to land, it's only like one or two miles per hour. So, you know, the combination of the three main parachutes with that retro thrust system you just explained really bring it down for this nice, soft touchdown. And at this point, right, our astronauts, they had, you know, time and space. They flew on a rocket, and now they're coasting back to Earth, back to that West Texas desert, to their awaiting friends and family here shortly. Yeah, they're probably just trying, starting to take some deep breaths yes, here. Yes. We can see the beautiful view here of the capsule descending with the mountains in the background. We're just a few hundred feet from touchdown. What a beautiful flight today. You'll see our velocity there, Jackie, is just around 16 miles an hour that will, like you said, decrease to just one or two miles an hour. Let's take a look. Watch for that cloud of dust. There it is. Our crew capsule is safely on the ground. A, a big touchdown moment there. Incredible sight to see.